What's up guys? My name is DRock and uh we are still going on this um on this uh revamping of uh Super Mario 64. Uh I figured for this one we're gonna work with some of the melodic elements. So uh when I say melodic elements, I'm gonna I mean these two pads right here. And then this ARP. So um for this, uh, I, I guess we'll start with the ARP. Um, with this ARP, it's uh, two it's two Thors that are the that they're the exact same thing, just doing a real plucky thing. Uh, both with the um, with the multi oscillators, they're panned out left and right, right, and then um, have a delay, which the pan is being modded by LFO two on the first Thor. That way it um, that way the delay kind of goes back and forth. It's really, really slight. Uh, one thing I want to do right off the bat is increase that slightly. And probably increase the rate uh, that it's LFOing. There we go. Uh, also, um, I'm going to change the LFO waveform. Personally, for uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, routing CV, the, uh, the, um, the uh, what's it called? The waveform I like would be a triangle versus a sine wave, because uh, the sine wave tends to hold on on like either side a bit too much, versus the triangle wave just kind of goes back and forth smoothly. See, and and we're not and we're not really panning out too far. If we go too far, it sounds a little odd. It's not bad actually. We might just turn it down just a bit from there. But sometimes when you start hard panning stuff, it it, it can sound a little bit strange. Um, Remember, as I mentioned before, the compressor is doing a uh, crazy amount of work. It's just smashing the heck out of it. I've input all the way up and threshold all the way down. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep that pretty much as is. Um, let's see, next one I want to attack is this one. There's a few things with this one that's, uh, that's kind of bugging me. A, I think it's a little bit too detuned. So I'm going to bring those down a bit. So I'm also going to bring down the chorusing too, just with the overall dry wet. We lose a little bit of width that way, but I think that that uh, that uh, this sound is still wide enough that we shouldn't have too many issues. And then we're also going to throw some um, throw some verb on here, and we're just going to use the um, what's it called? Um, the send effect on the mixer. So, uh, create a verb. We're gonna do a plate verb because I love plate verbs. Um, I'm not gonna have any damper. Gonna increase the high EQ, and then we're gonna chop out any lows just so the verb doesn't wash out and create a bunch of mud. Well, that also adds a tiny bit of width to the sound too. It, it gives it some actual depth. Forgot to activate that. Kind of like it now. I like how that's sounding now. You now, uh, a lot of times I'll end up um, throwing on the saw or throwing on a hard clipper. Kind of brings out a little extra high end content that I kind of like in the sound. Um, and then for this one, the one we're gonna throw some verb on is throw a bit more verb. So now we're keeping the verbs directly on the on the um like uh, in series with the track rather than going parallel. That way, when it runs through our our melodic stuff, uh, I think these are all running through synths. We have the ARP running separately, which I want. I'm gonna run that through the synths as well. That way, that starts getting side chained too. Uh, synths. So the verb is gonna be side chained as well, since it's all running through this. This rather than using a, a send effect up up here. Um, I would normally do that if uh, if I was going to um, 
if, if I was like going to um, be, be doing a more classic rec recording, I guess, like a, like an acoustic guitar. I actually just recently uh, recorded one of my uh, one of my friends just doing acoustic guitar and uh, vocals, and I I actually end up using all of the um, all the SSL mixer stuff rather than any any sort of inserts, just because it, it it just ended up sounding better, and because it was it was a more classical recording, I wanted to treat it it as such, I guess. Um, yeah, so now um, I think we've got these sitting a little bit better together. We lost a little bit of volume on our ARP after running it through synths. So we'll make up for that right there. I'm looking how that's sounding. Let's hear it. I like it stacked like that too, just because this gives it a bit of a. Uh, this one gives it a little more, um, I guess, uh, grit and uh, some of that higher mid content. That, that's nice. So, in context with everything else. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the, uh, for the real melodic content in this. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not really gonna be changing much with any of the composition. Actually, with this song, I want to keep it as much as much to my original composition as, as possible. I might be changing it by a few small things, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, I think next we're going to start attacking some of these bass sounds. Next, specifically, we're gonna start with uh, this guy. Nope, that's the sub bass. That one. Because I got some grabs with that one, and we'll dive into that one next, and possibly some of these other ones. So yeah, I'll catch you next time.